اشرقت نفسي بنور من فؤادي حينما رددت يا رب العباد وانتشت روحي وصار الدمع يجري يا الهي خذ بقلبي للرشاد اشرقت نفسي بنور من فؤادي حينما رددت يا رب العبادي الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فيقول الله عز وجل ومن أحسن قولا ممن دعا إلى الله وعمل صالحا وقال إنني من المسلمين وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كل أمة يدخلون الجنة إلا من أبى وقالوا يا رسول الله من يأبى قال من أطعني دخل الجنة ومن عصاني فقد أبى أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام My dear respected Imam Brothers, elders and sisters in Islam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh All praise is due to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Who has blessed you and I in so many ways Who has given you and I the tawfiq The understanding To come here this evening to listen about something in the nature of this deen, this religion, this way of life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen for you and I. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions to you and I in the Quran a surah. In fact, Imam Nasai, one of those compilers of the traditions of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned something concerning this surah. He said, Man sarrahu an yanzura ila al-qiyama ra'ya al-ayn. فَلْيَقْرَأْ إِذَا السَّمَاءُ فَطَرَتْ Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, He amongst you who wishes to see the day of judgment with the eyes of this world then he should read very frightening description Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he begins by this, this, this chapter this surah by saying إِذَا السَّمَاءُ فَطَرَتْ وَإِذَا الْكَوَاكِبُ تَثَرَتْ وَإِذَا الْبِحَارُ فُجِّرَتْ وَإِذَا الْقُبُورُ بُعْثِرَتْ عَلِمَتْ نَفْسٌ مَّا قَدَّمَتْ وَأَخَّرَتْ Wallahi frightening. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He begins this chapter. He begins by describing some of those events that is going to happen preceding the Day of Judgment. He begins with one of the 
greatest creations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed in this world and it, it indeed is one of the greatest creations that he created because it is such a creation that it defies all human intellect and logic Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he talks about the sky that it is such a creation he raised it without pillars you and I to build a house obviously you need one of the most important parts of this house is the roof the ceiling without these things the pillars that roof will not be suspended cannot be suspended but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling you and I to look at his greatness through the skies look at it how magnificent how great all you need to do is look up and you would see but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says concerning this creation in the days preceding the day of judgment he says إِذَا السَّمَاءٌ فَطَرَتْ soon you will see when that creation will start to break up and fall it would break up and fall وَإِذَا الْكَوَاكِبُ انْتَثَرَتْ From amongst those things that dwell in the heavens, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He talks about the kawakib, the stars. The stars will begin to fall. All those heavenly bodies that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decorated the skies with will fall. وَإِذَا الْبِحَارُ فُجِّرَتْ Another great creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He speaks about the oceans They will start to burst Other places in the Quran describes it as though it will start to boil Natural fire will start emanating from water how is that possible? This is in the design of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes some of his creations they defy logic, and it is for that precise reason. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he creates things that you can't even understand. In fact, in Lillahi Malak, one of those mysterious creations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses is that of an angel nisfuhul a'la min an-nar wa nisfuhul adna min al-thalj Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he gave the messenger of Allah permission to describe this angel the upper part of this angel is pure fire and the lower part of this angel is solid ice Lannar yudhibu thalj Wala thalj yubridu nar The ice is not melting or allowing the fire to go out And the fire is not melting the ice Allahu Akbar Could you understand that? That is in his will and irada his ability to create huh? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what does he say in the Quran he proclaims kun be exist and it comes into being so when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says that the oceans will boil and fire will erupt therein then let us hope and pray that he takes us before we see those things what will happen 
What will be our condition? Where will we run? Which rock will we hide beneath? There is no place to escape. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He then continues, one of those things that will happen on the day of judgment, the first things, وَإِذَا الْقُبُورُ بُعْثِرَتْ When the graves will be overturned. Overturned, what does that mean? That which dwells within will emerge. Again. Resurrection. Coming out of your grave. Urat. Hufat. You will be naked. Bareheaded. Barefooted. When this this picture was painted for the Sahaba, Aisha, radiallahu ta'ala anha, she asked the Prophet, her husband, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, awala yanzuru ba'duna ba'da, will we not look at the nakedness of one another? Huh? <laughs> will we not look at the nakedness of one another? The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Bal al amru ashaddu min dalika. The situation will be so severe, so horrid, that, O oh Aisha, you will not have the time and the will to look at the nakedness of he or she who is walking next to you. Every single person walking in one direction, herded by the malaika. Like the shepherd who is tending to his flock, he ensures that all of the sheep goes one way and together. Isn't that so? Who will be the shepherds on the day of judgment? The malaika. Driving you towards your judgment. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He asks a very pertinent question. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ask after narrating and informing all of what has to happen? All of that which must unfold. He asks you and I a very important question. A question that we should keep asking yourself until you die. What is that question Allah asks you and I? Ya ayyuhal, ya ayyuhal nasu O ya ayyuhal insanu Ma garraka bi rabbikal kareem This is the question that Allah poses to you and I. O man what has deceived you concerning your Rabb who is most gracious? What has taken away your attention? What has taken away your gaze? What has taken you away from the straight path? What it is that removed Allah as the goal? What? What has deceived you? Let us ask ourselves that question tonight. What it is that is taking me away from the remembrance of my Creator? What is the thing that is keeping me away from the Salah that I have to pray? What is the thing that is occupying you? from making your tilawa what has preoccupied you from remembering that thing that slices happiness in two death what what is it
One of those Khulafa from the Abbasi dynasty, his name was Mahdi. Upon building a very lavish home with big, nice, great pillars, rooms, huge halls, he invited some of his ministers and those who were closest to him to participate in his happiness. Look at what I built. Huh? One of those individuals whom he summoned and invited was a very, very famous poet. His name was Abul Itahia. His couplets, his qasaid are still preserved and studied in different madaris of the world today. His words, how eloquent he was, a zahid he was, a person who made Allah the objective. When he, he presented himself in front of the Khalifa, the Khalifa looked at him and said, Ya Abal Itahiya. ماذا تقول في ذلك؟ What is he saying to the poet? He says, Oh Abu, what do you have to say about what you are seeing around you now? And the poet did indeed give him a good lesson. In poetry, subhanallah. Wallahi, translating what the poet said to the Khalifa, I will not do justice to it. I could never do justice to what he said, what he responded to Mahdi. He said, Ishma bada laka salima. في ذل شاهقة القصور يسعى عليك بما اشتهيت لدى الرواح أو البكور. This is what he said. He is telling Mahdi, you know what? Live. And enjoy yourself in this merriment that you are carrying about yourself with. In the shade of these lofty pillars of this palace, your servants they will scamper morning and evening to fulfill your every wish and desire this is what he said then Mahdi said Summa Mahda then what that, that is all you have to say is that it but that wasn't it Abu Itahiya he continues he says إذا النفوس تقعقعت في ضيق حشجة الصدور هناك تعلم يقينا بأنك كنت في غرور سبحان الله سبحان الله. He said a time is going to come when the breaths that the human make will become labored.
في ضيق حشرجة الصدور because of the tightness and the narrowness of what occurs before death Hashraja. If you look in the dictionary, it means the rattle that the throat makes just before the soul exits. Mahdi, this is what you're going to hear. Fahunaka ta'lamu imokinan. And at that time, you will know and recognize. Mokinan. With complete yaqeen. With firm surety. Undeniable. That when you are alive, the enjoyment that you are participating and partaking in, the laughter that you are enjoying. It was only a short time you were being deceived. Huh? You were being deceived. Isn't it? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is posing that question to you. Ma garraka bi rabbikal kareem. What has taken you away? From the remembrance of your Creator. Who is He? Alladhi khalaqaka fasawwaka fa'adalak. He, Azza wa Jal, who created you, who perfected you. And allowed you to grow in proportions. Subhanallah. To grow in proportions. This is, a, this is something that you and I should ponder over. What does that mean? You are a creation of different stages. Where did you start from? Nutfa. You began from a dirty drop of fluid. So dirty that if one drop falls on your clothes, your salah will not be accepted. Hmm? That is how dirty that drop of fluid is. That is where you started from. And you remained like that for 40 days. Different stage now. Stage two. What happens in this stage? You change and you become alaqa. A clot of congealed blood. For another 40 days. Stage 3. You're changing again. Now you are becoming a mudra. A what? A lump of flesh. Ah. Stage, stage, stage. Then what? After 4 months, so 340 days is what? 4 months? After four months, another stage. That which is growing inside of the womb, something is going to join it now. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends an angel with the soul. Coming from where? Alam al arwah. Coming, coming. This soul now is stitched, joined with this piece of flesh that is growing. Hmm. 
and then you are in the womb of your mother you are swimming in a pool where is the food coming from where is nourishment coming from hmm. and after nine months so the doctors would have you believe the, the child comes out now you are in a different world now what you knew was different you came to a different world now different stage and now you will live here until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destines death huh? think about it huh? you came out and Allah is so merciful no matter what that little child does Allah records no sin for him huh? he will come out he will grow like our little children they would run they would play they would misbehave not so they would steal they would lie no sin recorded very important stage especially for the parents to ensure that this child remains on the straight path and where necessary correction should be administered huh? correction Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says Muru awladakum bis salati wa hum sab'u sinin Command your children to pray when they attain the age of seven Listen to his words command instruct He didn't stop there Wadrimuhum alayha wa hum ashrun and beat them when they are negligent in this salah when they reach 10 years old I say take a pass they can't well be the child no 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 there are ways to do it hmm? one of our teachers used to say hang the whip and let them see it <laughs> let them know it's existing and let them know it is easily reachable. Ah. This is the extent that the Rasul went to show how important it is for those children to pray. And one other piece of advice he mentioned in that narration وَفَرِّقُوا بَيْنَهُمْ فِي الْمَضَاجِعِ and if they were sleeping together your son and your daughter separate them now this stage separate them but when that child reaches bulug when he becomes an adult it varies with a girl and a boy No, a different stage. In that same surah, Allah SWT, He mentions that stage. Kiraman katibin, ya'lamuna ma tafalun. Allah SWT, He deputes two angels now that will sit on either side of the head. And they know everything that you do. They will record now. Now when you miss your salah, it's written. When you lie, it's written. Everything. Different stage. This man, he would continue. This woman would continue growing, 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 growing. And if we put in, in that line, marriage, Work, job, 
children then what death yeah. you know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says in the Quran in Surah Yasin I think that verse is everybody's aspiration today is to live long yeah. and nobody wants to die young Everybody wants to live long. A long life. But there's a consequence for a long life, you know. There are consequences for that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, Waman nu ammiruhu nunakishu fil khalq. I'm sure we know where that verse is. Where is that verse? Surah Yasin. Huh? A surah that we should be reading every day. And because we're reading it every day, we should learn what it means to. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, and he whom we give long life to. We will put a reverse in his age. You know, we always had it car and drive. But sometimes we need to reverse. Allah says, when we give you old age, we allow you to reach old age, we will put in that reverse gear now. So now is a different stage. What stage is that? What we say in Trinidad? Once a man, twice a child. So now the reverse gear goes in. Now what happens? There was a time when he was standing erect and straight. Now he is inclined. He has a permanent hook. Eh? Permanent. No matter how much rope and elastic you use, it would never get straight. You're here. MashaAllah, Uncle Hassan. One time you're here was, you didn't born with gray hair. Eh? No, you didn't. There was a time when you used to look in the mirror and it used to look black. Now when you look in the mirror, it's white. Gray. Eh? And if we, if we actually look at the verse and, and, and try to apply it literally with the reverse gear, a baby comes into this world with some here. And some of us would go with some here too. The hair starts to fall. The nice smooth skin. Huh? Today when we go to sleep at night, we're making sure we have a bottle of cream right next to the pillow. And we cream in from head to foot. Cream, cream, cream. All kind of cream. Sweet smelling cream. Some cream they tell you don't even go next to the stove because it's flammable. Allahu Akbar. What kind of cream we rub in. A time is going to come when that same skin it's not going to be smooth anymore. It's going to get rough. And then certain parts of the body when it was nice and thick and holding around the bone now it's going to sag. Sagging. It's like it's loosing away from the bone. The flesh is melting. We wouldn't want nobody to see with that type. And there's no cream in Pennywise that would tighten it back. <laughs> some people might differ. They might go and do some surgery or some kind of thing right, to stretch it back, make it look smooth. But that's artificial. It's not real. 
So what Allah says, وَمَنْ نُعَمِّرْهُ نُنَكِّزْهُ فِي الْخَلْقِ We will reverse engineer him now. He will start to be on the decline. And day by day, with the ticking of the clock, every day that goes by, that day takes portions of you with it. It leaves with portions of you. Stage after stage. What stage you reach now? Allahu Alam. But after that stage, there's a different world now. What world are we going to? From Alam al Allah, the world of the souls, to Alam al Rahim, to the world of the womb. Then from the world of the womb to Alam al Dunya, to the world as we know it. And then what? Barzakh. Barzakh. A world between two. The Christians, they call it purgatory. A world between two. This world and the next. And there you will stay until you come out of the grave. These are the stages that all of us will have to go through. And after listening to all of this, dictated to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, explained in detail by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O oh, insan, what has deceived you? What has turned your direction away from the truth? And placed you in a lie. Some of us, we want to remain in the lie. We don't want to see the truth. So we surround ourselves with things that take this remembrance away. Hmm. The phone, the tablet. The television, the newspaper, the magazine, the fast life, the nice restaurants on the outside, the nice pretty clothes, the expensive shoes, the nice haircuts. Taking you away from your real purpose what you should be remembering what we chose to forget no what we choose to forget it's a choice this is why the rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam in many a hadith he would encourage his ummati to visit the cemetery go See, sit, ponder. Those people who were buried here, one day they walked just like you. See, all of those people, they don't even have headstones. They don't even have a name. One day, once upon a time, they had a name. Once upon a time, they had a house. They had children. They had a life. Now that is no more. So when Abu Itahia is telling Mahdi, enjoy yourself. Play in the shade of this big castle, this palace that you built. But one day, that merriment that enjoyment will finish it will end and now you will come to understand firmly that it was just a deception 
It was temporary. It was short. Short. Yesterday, I mentioned a hadith in the Markaz. Abu Darda, radiallahu ta'ala an. What did he say? He said, Yabna Adam, O son of Adam, inna ma anta ayyam, you are only days. Kullama zahaba yawmun, zahaba ba'aduk, every single day that goes by, it takes portions of you with it. Now, Abu Darda, what, how did he describe you and I? Days. Days. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes it as an evening or a morning. That is how short 80 years is, 75 years is. Huh? Allah says, a morning or an evening. In Surah Abasa, I think. وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ السَّاعَةِ أَنَّ النَّازِعَةِ وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ السَّاعَةِ أَيَّانَ مُرْسَاهَا فِيمَا أَنْتَ مِنْ ذِكْرَاهَا إِلَى رَبِّكَ مُنْتَهَاهَا إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُنْذِرُ مَنْ يَخْشَاهَا كَأَنَّهُمْ يَوْمَ يَرَوْنَهَا لَمْ يَلْبَثُوا you know there is a recital, one of those recitations that you know we most of us here we read hafs. But there is another rawi who says when you reach here, stop. Stop. Why is he saying stop? To reflect of what is being said. Don't continue. Stop for two or three seconds. Then continue. There are certain parts of in halves as well. They tell you to stop. him for those who when should you kaira? You see, you see, you see right there something says sakta. And that's what you say. Stop. <laughs> Why? Ponda. Reflect. See what is being said. So a group of Bedouins, not Bedouins really, the Mushrikun, at the behest of the Yahud, alayhim, may the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon them. At the behest of the Yahud, they were Tutored. They were given questions to test the authenticity of the claim of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One of those questions that they posed to our noble messenger was what? The day of judgment. Tell us about the day of judgment. So this is what Allah says recording that conversation. They're asking you about the day of judgment. When is it? If he is the prophet, he will tell you when is the day of judgment. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, talking to the messenger now. To what or to which capacity will you answer? How will you answer? How will you respond? A rhetorical question from Allah to his messenger you can't because that is not in your knowledge ila rabbika muntahaha the extent of that is with your rabb inna ma anta mundiru man yakhshaha you were only sent to warn them about that day not to tell them when you were sent to muhammad to warn them and then Allah it is as though he pressed fast forward 
and gave the prophet a glimpse of what has to happen on that day ka'annahum yawma yarawnaha lam yalbathu illa ashiyatan aw duhaha look at them O Muhammad look at their faces when they would come out of their graves they would be operating as though when they were here in this life it was ashiya aw duhaha a morning or an evening eh? so 80 years a person would live to see in this dunya 75 years a person would live to see in this dunya many people will not see that age very few will go beyond but whatever age you reach when you come out of your grave how long did I stay it was just like a morning boy it was just like a evening boy that is how short this life is in comparison to what is going to happen after death so Abul Itahiya is telling Mahdi Ishma badalaka salima eh? enjoy yourself have a nice time what that is sarcasm eh? <laughs> sarcasm to its best enjoy yourself for when that death rattle is resonating in your ears who you think hears that noise first huh who you think hears that noise first it starts off like a murmur and then it starts to sound like a greater it's so horrible to hear that the living will look for excuse to leave huh? has anybody ever heard it huh? have you ever heard it well if you didn't you will hear it one day <coughs> may not be someone else it will be you your own rattle and you know what the Rasul said a door closes when that happens a door that every single body has two of huh? all of us we have doors you know two doors two doors and those two doors will close what is in the other side what is in the other side of that door forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but that door closes in two places when the sun rises from the west and when the next door closes the death rattle when you see him, that death rattle starts to make noise you know the prophet said the door of tawbah is shut you have reached the end like Jibril, Mi'raj. He reached the Sidratil Muntaha huh? with the messenger. What is he? Sidra. The Sidra is, is a tree. It's a tree that is on the limits of known creation. You know, one day we should have a talk about the address, a description of the creation. You know, we are the dunya. You know, what dunya means dani, the lowest. We are the lowest. And as you're going up, we reach the first sky. From the first sky to the second sky, 500 years distance. Going up, straight up to the sidra. This is where Jibril had to stop. And this tree, it has a sifa, 
Al-Muntaha. This is the point I'm trying to draw. At. The end and the extent. Jibril said, this is it. I can't go any further, O Prophet. If I am to cross here, I will be destroyed. The limit, the end of the line. So that gargara, that noise, that is going to come out from our throats, that is the muntaha of your life. You have now reached the limit, you have reached the end to cross, the soul must come out now. So the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what did he say? Al-Babu Yansad The door will be shut here. So a person, if he had some strength left, to say, Astaghfirullah. It will be said in vain. The door is shut. Wal-iyadu billah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you and I the permission to seek His forgiveness whilst that door is open the door is still open the door will remain open until we reach the limits until we reach the end and then the door will shut scary frightening and when that noise starts to rattle, no doctor could bring you back. No medicine could avert what is going to happen. May Allah SWT make it easy for us. May He make us firm on the deen of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. May He make May He make us to see Him as the goal, as the object, and to work towards that. Just imagine, all that was explained. We have any worries, by? We have no worries. The only worry we should have is to die with Iman. Huh? A person going home tonight may not have some food in the kitchen. There is no worries, by. The same one who is given the kuffar will give you. At the end of the month, when we can't pay the bill, make dua. It is not the end. That is not problems. Problems is when the angel comes knocking and you didn't say La ilaha illallah. That is real problems. Because that suffering of not eating three square meals a day, that suffering of wearing old clothes, if we could call that a suffering, that suffering of sleeping in a house whose roof is leaking, that suffering of sleeping in a house that is hot, no AC, that suffering of sleeping without AC or driving in AC that suffering will end with death huh? but to die without Iman your suffering now starts huh? it now begins and you know what will happen in the day of judgment? One amazing thing in front of the entire creation. We will see it. We will see it. Jibreel will be ordered to bring a ram. A ram. And that ram will be slaughtered. 
and a proclaimer will proclaim what will he say who knows what will a proclamation be made it will be sounding and it will be so resounding that the entire creation will hear it what anybody knows from today there will be no more death death will come in the form of a ram and Jibril will slaughter it no death from today <laughs> you know that that is frightening so no matter how much pain those denizens of hell will go through there's no end to it that is problems huh? that is problems we don't see no problems here really. whatever problems you see here that's temporary it will come to an end but the problems there if there are to be any well ayyadu billah May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us. So we need to make some effort. We need to make some effort now. Those who are not making effort start now. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it in such a way that He has put it in the hearts of a few brothers to go and spend some time to remind themselves. And, 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 and like our lives, there is no limit to this jamaat. <laughs> limit in number. Join them, sit with them, make effort with them. This deen did not happen in ease and comfort. It came about in struggle and sacrifice. Without struggle or sacrifice, we would not have been Muslims today. So there's a level of struggle and sacrifice that we as Muslims should make. And if we are to call going in Jamaat now struggle and sacrifice, then what we would call the struggle and the sacrifice that the Sahaba made. We can't call it the same. We have to call that something different. So with these few words, I do hope and pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you an Ali Tawfiq to bring these valuable advices into our lives practically so that we may be successful not only here but as well as in the next